CSS and JavaScript. Truncating text with ellipsis. Showing and hiding. Let's add a division element and write something inside. Let's write some CSS code using the ID of our division. When the width is set to 211 pixels, the text that doesn't fit inside the division automatically wraps to the bottom. Let's make the background color pink for a better look. To prevent the wrapping, we can use the white space now wrap. We can use overflow hidden to hide overflowing text. Let's use three dots at the end to represent the overflowing text. We will display the cursor as a pointer while running our JavaScript code. Adding padding helps us achieve a better appearance. Now, let's write our JavaScript code. When the division is clicked, a function will run. It will change the white space property. If it is normal, it will make it now wrap. Otherwise, it will make it normal. Let's try what we wrote. Our code is working nicely. JavaScript. Mapping object property values. Let's add an array of objects. Our goal will be to obtain the values of all name properties. We will use the map method. The map method generates a new array. We assign the resulting array to the names variable. The new array contains name property values from each object. To enhance clarity, let's write the function inside the map method as this. The function takes each object and returns only the name property. Let's use a regular function instead of an arrow function. Let's use a separate named function. When we pass an object to this function, it returns the value of the name property. Let's use it. We wrote the same thing in a few different ways. Now, let's look at the results. Each one worked correctly. And we obtained all the names. JavaScript, array find, and find last methods. Let's add an array of objects. Some properties contain the same values according to our purpose. Let's find the first element that satisfies a condition. D represents each individual element in the array. If we were to write this arrow function as a regular function, we would do it like this. The array find method takes a function as a parameter, which is a function to execute for each element in the array. Let's print the name and ID values to the screen. Our operation was successful. Now, let's find the last element that matches our conditions. The operation is successful. If we want to find all the elements that match our conditions, we can use the array filter method. Let's see how many elements were found and check for information about the first element. JavaScript, newlish coalescing operator. Let's define a variable with the value as a number. Let's use the or operator. If the value on the left side is falsy, it will print the value on the right side to the screen. In this example, since the left side is not a falsy value, it will print 3648 to the screen. Now, let's do the same thing using the newlish coalescing operator. Since the left side is not null or undefined, it prints 3648 to the screen. If we set our value to zero, since zero is a falsy value, the OR operation will return no info. Since zero is not null or undefined, the newlish coalescing operator will return zero. JavaScript Object Methods Let's add an object named person. Let's add a few key value pairs. We call these key value pairs properties. Now let's add a method. When a function is used within an object, we call it method. When we call this method, it will write something to the screen. We can print the values of properties using dot notation. We can also call the methods using dot notation. JavaScript. Array destructuring. Let's add an array with two elements. We will assign the array elements to variables t1 and t2 using array destructuring assignment. Let's print the variable t1 to the screen and t2. Let's use the t1 variable within a sentence using a template literal. When I type t, I can see its content on the screen. I am using the Quokka.js extension. Now, let's use the t2 variable. 
using array destructuring, we assigned elements from an array to variables. JavaScript Array Intersection We will add two arrays and find the common elements between these two arrays. We will use the filter method to find the same elements between two arrays. Let's store the new array returned from the filter method in a variable. We will filter the targets array. The filter method will take each element in the targets array one by one and check if it exists in the array above. Let's look at the result. JavaScript using objects instead of if or switch. Let's add a function named get explanation. This function will work with a parameter named item. Let's add an object named explanations. This object is composed of key value pairs. We will select one of these data based on the item parameter. The item parameter will be compared with the keys and the corresponding value will be returned. The or operator returns the first truthy value. If the first value is undefined, it will return no explanation. Let's define a variable named explanation and store the result returned from the function in it. Then, let's print the value of it. Let's try different values and observe the results. Our function is working as intended. We have managed to add a conditional statement without using if else or switch case statements. JavaScript Make a sentence from separate strings. Let's add four separate strings. We can use string concatenation using the plus sign. We can use template literals or alternatively referred to as string interpolation. Or we can use string concatenation with concat method. Now, let's print all of them on the screen. We successfully concatenated the strings. Please take a look at the comments. JavaScript. Showing button-based messages. The final result of what we are going to do is this. Let's add our buttons to use with our JavaScript code. The added buttons appear in the center because the CSS part sets text align center for the body. When we click on these buttons, the results will appear in a single paragraph. Let's open the script tags and write our JavaScript code. Select all button elements with an ID attribute and store them in a variable. We loop through all buttons, assigning the show explanation function to their click events. Let's write show explanation. We will get explanations using button IDs and we will write this explanation to the content of the paragraph. Let's write get explanation. The get explanation function has an object with key value pairs where each key matches a button ID. If no match is found, it will display no explanation. Yes, our code is working. JavaScript typewriter effect. How to make a typewriter effect like this? Let's add a division with the ID output. Let's open our script tags and write our JavaScript code inside. Let's write our text that will appear on the screen. We are using the plus sign to write the text on separate lines to save space on the screen. In reality, JavaScript will consider this text as a single line. We will print the letters one by one. The index of the first letter is zero. Let's add a function called type text. We will perform our actions within this function. The function will run as long as the index number is less than the length of the text. And with each iteration, a character will be added to the content of the output division element. And we will increment the index number each time. Call the typewriter function after 50 milliseconds. Of course, we need to initially call the typewriter function once. JavaScript, seven string methods. Let's write a text to work on. We will use the Quokka.js extension to display the results on the screen. Let's convert all to uppercase. All to lowercase. Second character of the text is S. First character of the text is I. Let's check from which index a word begins. Let's check another one. And another. Let's replace one word with another. Let's replace one character with another. The replace method changes only one occurrence. 
If we want to replace all occurrences, we use replace all. HTML and CSS. Change division background color on hover. What we are going to do is this. Let's add four divisions with the same class named Unity. All the properties I add to this class will affect these four divisions. Now, let's write the texts that will appear inside our division elements. Let's open our style tags and start writing our CSS code inside them. We are writing the content of Unity class. Let's make the background colors of our divisions light blue. Add a 10 pixel gap between the division boundaries and the text. Add a 5 pixel gap between the division and its surroundings. When we hover over the division element, the mouse cursor will appear as a pointer. Let's write the hover effect. The background color will change when hovering over the division. Let's try the code we wrote. Yes, it works.